In this presentation, we're going to continue on with the payment of employees within our accounting system. We're going to be doing this by imagining that we have a third party that's going to be processing the payroll for us, such as an ADP or a paycheck. So we're going to take that information from them and enter that then into our accounting system. Time to push forward with Sage 50 Cloud Accounting. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars file. We're currently in the customer and sales section. We're going to be looking at the uh, payroll uh, employee and payroll section quickly. Uh, note that in the past we took we talked about setting up the payroll within Sage. You can do so. It's typically going to be an added feature and you'd want to uh, talk to your representative as well as your accounting professionals to get advice on the payroll. Within our practice problem because we don't want to be adding anything to uh, the practice problem we may look at uh, payroll in a separate kind of course in and of itself for payroll we are going to be imagining payroll is being done by a third party such as an adp or a paychex we're taking that information we're going to be entering it into our system so last time we thought about the kind of reporting that could happen uh, and be provided to us and the kind of thinking about what is going to be done in our system and what might be done by like a third party and how would we kind of deviate the, the tasks and what would be needed to be done between the two so if we had someone else like a like a someone else that was doing like an adp or a paychecks then what we need from them typically one of the things we're going to need is going is going to have the detailed information so we would like them to be able to provide to the employee what the employee needs on a paycheck by paycheck basis which is going to be the earnings uh, that they earned for that paid period minus all the withholdings and the net pay reported by both paycheck and reported by the year to date total for each employee. So we, we got to track all that kind of information and allow that detailed information to be provided as needed. Uh, and then we're in our system, however, uh, we really want to just make the financial statements right. So in our system, we need to make the financial statements right. So really, what we want is kind of like the journal entry. We can think of the journal entry then in our system as basically the overall journal entry. Basically, as if you could think of it as if all the employees were one employee and we could total up the, the entire thing and then just enter this into our system so the financial statements are right for the financial reporting. So if someone then came to us and we entered just the, the totals, we'd say we would say yes look everything is right for the financial statement but if the employee came in and say i need information about my specific circumstance we're going to say go to adp or paychecks or we're going to go to adp or paychecks to get that detailed information while in our financial statements we have the general overall information now as we enter this into our system with that method we want to think about do we want the cash to tie out uh on a check by check basis because these checks are going to be coming out of our checking account so do we need the, the cash to tie out so that we can more easily reconcile? Uh, in which case we want to we might want to break out the transactions on a journal entry by journal entry basis, employee by employee, or do we just want to enter one transaction and just be able to reconcile and make sure that everything ties out to the lump sum that's going to be coming out of our payroll account? So we're going to in this system, I'm going to put in two two transactions by employee so we get to the net checks that will come out so we can then look at the bank reconciliation more easily. And then we'll enter the second one with a journal entry down below. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to enter this into the system. Let's go back over to the uh, Sage then. And I'm going to go to do this into the vendor section. I'm just going to make a check. So we're in the vendor section. The first two, I'm going to make a check because the checking account is going down. Therefore, the money out form is probably the easiest form to use. So I'm just going to make a check for it. And uh, we're going to say that these are going to be our two employees. Now, I'm going to set them up in essence as a vendor rather than basically an employee i'd like to track the information but i'm not running the payroll through sage so therefore i'm going to put them in basically as a vendor here so i'm going to add another vendor i'm going to say new and we'll add the vendor and so i'm just going to put uh this is going to be adam and there's the name there we probably would want all their contact information but i'm going to put the the minimum uh, information now now the vendor type you might want to add like employee or something like that in, in a type 1099 no we're not going to 1099 them we're gonna that's going to be something that hopefully adp will help us with a w2 for and then this is going to be going to uh the, the wages expense that's what we want so I'll, I'll keep that as wages expense as the default although we'll probably have to have a split account when we record it so that would be the default account whenever going to this particular vendor which is basically an employee so I'm going to then say save. Let's save that up top. And then let's close this up top. 
And then let's choose that new employee, which was, uh, I forgot his name. I forgot our employee's name. Adam. That's Adam. How could you forget Adam? Such a good guy. So we're going to be going through here and saying that, uh, now we might want to put like it's an electronic transfer because again, we can use an electronic transfer even though we're using the money out form. All right. And then I'm going to say that the date is going to be 013020. And the amount that's going to be coming out of the paycheck is going to be the net check. So that's going to be the 353933. Uh, 353933. Three, three, three. So it's going to be 3539.33. Three, three. And then we, we can't just be putting the other side to wages, however, because part of it, uh, uh, it we, we need to have two accounts that are going to be affected here. So if I go back on over, over, we know that this amount came out of the checking account, but the payroll expenses for the gross pay. So I need to record wages expense. I'll report the gross pay, which is the 458333. So I'm going to say, all right, this needs to be the gross pay, 4583.33. And then the other one's going to go to a liability account, some kind of payroll liability account. So let's see what they have here for us. I'm looking for, you know, current liabilities. Now they broke it out into federal payroll tax payable, then FUTA, state, SUTA. These are all payroll tax liability accounts. What we, all we basically are looking at are the federal payroll tax liabilities, which includes Social Security, Medicare, and FIT, federal income tax. So we'll include that one. And it's going to be in there. Notice it gives it to us now at a negative 1044. That's what it should be because that's what we need in order to be in balance. So that's going to be this amount here, 1044. Or you can think of it as the sum of these three amounts would add, which add up to 1044 as well. So there is that. So we're going to say that looks good. So let's say OK. And our split is there. Let me just open it back up and make sure it's still there. It's still there. So that's good. So then we're going to say save. Let's save that. And we're going to say yes. I'm a little hesitant, but I think everything's working well. I don't know why. Everything's looking perfect, but I was a little hesitant. So the other one's going to be Erica. So let's say Erica and do the same thing with Erica here. So I'm going to say Erica. We'll set up Erica and we'll pay her as well. She's already been paid. They've been paid already, but now we're just putting it into the accounting system. So it's going to be Erica. I'm going to say Smith. And we don't have Erica set up again. Let's set her up as a new vendor. And we'll go through the same process with her. And we're going to say that uh, this is going to be Erica Smith. And I'm going to copy that. Put that in the name down below as well. And uh, the, the type, she's going to be an employee. And I'm going to say wages over here. We're going to say this is going to wages. Now, remember, we're setting these up as, as a vendor, even though they're employees, because we're taking this information from the third party ADP and a paycheck. We're not running the payroll through the Sage 50. So I'm going to say, OK, and let's close this back out. So now we should be able to pick Erica, make sure I'm picking her from the list. All right. So there we have that. And then I'm going to say this is an electronic for 11. That looks good cash good then the amount that's coming out of the checking account is going to be for the amount of the net check that's how much is, is she's actually getting even though she earned 800 because the fed took 170 from her but we had to be the people that took it even though it's really we don't get to keep it because the fed took it from her really but we they made us take it so in any case then if we do the split up top we're going to say wages, and, and that's got to be the 800 what what she actually earned, the $800. So we'll go back over here and say this should be 800 And then the other side is going to be going to that uh, liability account. So we're looking for that liability. And we're picking up the federal payroll tax payable. So federal ta payroll tax is payable. That's the one. That's the 170. They're giving it to us because uh, that's uh, that's what needs to be done to be in balance, right? So that's what needs to be done. That's going to be these three items, which add up to the 170, or we can see it in journal entry format down here. All right. So then let's close that back out and let's say OK so that it saves. Let's check it one more time. I like to check it one more time just to make sure it didn't disappear. So there it is. 
Looks good. Let's go ahead and record that and take a look at the financials thus far. So we're going to say uh, record that, please, and then close this. And then we're going to go to our reports drop down. Let's, let's go to the financial statements. We'll open up the balance sheet first. Balance sheet bring in the period or the range for January. So we'll take a look at it for January. Make this uh, large. And then I'm going to see what came out of the checking account. What's going to come out of our checking account. Now also note that a lot of times you might see companies will often set up another payroll account. Uh, that will be a checking account just for the payroll. And that'll make it easy for everything in there will be payroll related. So that makes it a little bit easier to, to see the payroll items. It's a good practice to do. We're not doing it here. So it's in our checking account. All right. So we're going to go then and say that we paid the uh, 3630 and the 3539. So there they are. There they are. There's Adam and Erica, our two employees. They're excellent workers. We did well hiring them. And then the other side is going to be going to the uh, income statement. So let's go on over to our income statement. I'm going to open up an income statement. So we'll open that up. And then we're going to change the dates back on to the uh, January. I don't need the zero amounts. So I'm going to remove the zeros because I don't need to see those. And there we have it. So wages down below. Double clicking on the wages now. There's our wages. There's our two, two amounts of the wages. Note those are the gross pay not the net pay, the, the expenses, the gross pay. The difference between the gross pay and the net pay, what we saw in the cash and what we now see in the expense accounts is what we took from them, but we, they, we had to, it's not our fault. Like we took it because the Fed wants it and they made us take it, so it's a liability, so we owe it. So if we go then down to the liabilities, then it's gonna be the federal payroll tax payable, double clicking on the federal payroll tax payable, and there's the credits, the two amounts that were taken out of uh, the paychecks that we now need to pay for the Fed. Now, is that it? No, no, that's not it. Because we then have to pay the employer portion of payroll taxes, which is going to be the Social Security and Medicare. So we're paying this over and above what has been actually earned by the employees. It's not coming out of their check. We have to pay it for having employees because we have employees. We have to pay it. So... There's going to be the 307 and the 77. So we're going, to, we're going to add those up. Now, we're not actually paying it yet, but we need to process it as we process the payroll because it, we incur it for some reason when we pay employees. So that means that we're going to record the payroll tax expense and the payroll liability. I'm just going to do it as a journal entry in a lump sum because I don't have to deal with that kind of tying it out to the bank reconciliation uh, as we do this process. So let's go back on over. We're going to say that uh, we'll go back on over here. And let's do this one with a journal entry. So I will typically go to tasks up top because uh, this isn't a normal transaction. There's no cash involved and there's no other you know, stated form for it. So that, we, that means we default to the journal entry. So or, there, or we go, we fall back to the last resort, which is basically the journal entry in 013020. And we're going to say the general ledger account. Let's see if they have a payroll tax. Now, sometimes some accounting systems don't break out the difference between payroll taxes expense and the payroll expense. But I think it's, you know, a good practice to do usually. So let's see what they have here. They got wages expense and they did break out payroll tax expense. So payroll tax expense then should only include the employer portion of the payroll tax. So then I'm, I'm going to say then that the this is going to be for the three... Uh, 84 which is going to be the sum of these two amounts for so that's what we owe for both Adam and Erica for payroll taxes for them both so that's going to be the 384 and then the other side is going to be going to the liability which we've already seen the liability account for the payroll liabilities because we owe it uh, just like we do for the amount we took from the employees. It's, go, it's all going to the same people. The same people are taking it from us as they did from the employees. So it's going to the Fed. So we're looking for the payroll tax for the Fed. So the federal payroll taxes, that's the one. And so there we have it. And that's going to be a credit of the 384. There we have it. So that looks good. Let's go ahead and record this. So we're going to say save. And then yes. And then we'll close this one back out. And then let's take a look at what we have so far. Or we're pretty much done. We'll look at it now. This is what we're, this is the completed project pretty much. 
well not totally for this component of this part of it so then we're going to say then that uh, the payroll liability if i go down to the payroll liability we have the federal taxes it should be going up in the credit direction for the amount now our employer portion so we have the amount that was taken from adam for payroll taxes the amount taken from erica for payroll taxes and the amount taken from the the company for payroll taxes all go into of course the same place the federal government that tries to split it up as if they're different things you know they are kind of different programs you know for the social security medicare and the federal income tax all right so then we're going to close this back out and then we're going to go to the other side on the income statement and now we've got if if it didn't show up refresh the report up top then we have the wages as well as the payroll taxes so here's the payroll taxes double clicking that then uh, you have our payroll taxes remember the payroll taxes should only be recording the employer portion again that's something that most people don't fully understand too well so that's going to be it for now let's get out of here